Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today is our 15th session, our halfway mark in Ramadan, uh, and we're covering four beautiful names of Allah, four beautiful attributes of Al Ali, Al Ala, Al Muta'ali, and Al Azim, the names of uh, meaning the high, the most high the high above and the greatest of the greatest. And uh, inshallah to begin here, bismillah, um, the names of Al-Ali, Al-Ala, and Al-Muta'ali have the same root. And th these uh, these all have these connotations of being high or being exalted uh, above that which we, which we can conceive, not, not just on a literal sense um, of, of dimensionally, uh, spatially limiting to high, um, with respect to low, high, high, but also in a spiritual sense um, of that which is high, not just uh, literally, but also in our values, in our associations, in our priorities. Um, so thinking of this highness, this exaltedness as something that is beyond the realm of just the physical nature, though in the physical as well, uh, we hold this to be the case. And then Al-Azim has the root that is, it has the meanings of being uh, imposing, but also being great and being greater. Uh, so also thinking of that in the sense that these aren't just names uh, that are confined to the physical sense uh, or the spatial sense, that they are in the spiritual, the metaphysical and all other aspects encompassing this, uh, because the Arabic, uh, is one that is rich in meaning and can't be encapsulated even by our translations. And so thinking uh, if it's a divine name of Allah, if it's an attribute, it goes beyond that which we can even comprehend. So to begin with these names, inshallah, these names, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim lifts up that these names are general enough to which they encompass all kinds of greatness and all sorts of elevation, as we were mentioning, in, in the sense of the literal, the metaphorical, uh, the metaphysical, spiritual, all that, that Allah is great and Allah is high in his essence. He's uh, high and great in the attributes and in Allah's actions. That Al-Ali as the high, Al-Ala, the most high, and Al-Muta'ali, the high above, uh, are the ones whose essence, whose attributes, and whose actions are far above being tarnished from anything that is below or anything that is uh, beneath them. Uh, and whatever we elevate or whatever we see as elevated, whether it's people, whether it's ourselves or it's certain objects or things of focus or attention, we recognize that in these names that Allah is far above that, that these names convey that Allah is beyond the scope of that. We may look up to the heavens and say that is very high up, or we build a tower and we say, look how high that is, that that's touching the heavens or anything like that, um, or that this person is, you know, uh, the, the most famous person, like this person is all of that. We lift people up to different degrees, but recognizing that above all of this, um, above all of this is still Allah far beyond that, far beyond comprehension and comparison. Uh, and then also that Allah, in addition to being high above that, which is ascribed or high above that, which is compared to Allah is also al-Azim, um, that whose essence, whose attributes and whose actions are greatest than that can be, which, which we conceive that Allah's mercy is the greatest kind that we can ever receive. Allah's generosity is the best and greatest kind that we can ever be given. And that Allah's sovereignty, Allah's justice, Allah's wisdom, Allah's knowledge, uh, Allah's equity, all of these different things, Allah's compassion and love, these are all greater than what we can ever experience or express. And so uh, finding these not as a reason to, uh, to, to kind of feel left out in a sense and feel that we can't ever access these, but to see that these are things that we have access to, especially those as those as uh, individuals who believe in Allah, that we have access to that which is the greatest of the greatest. And we just need to recognize that uh, oftentimes we, we we denote Allah in certain confines and say Allah is only in this aspect or only this to see Allah holistically in the things in life that give us joy uh, in the love, the mercy, uh, the generosity that other people give us and to see so much more in that in Allah. And so knowing with this name, with the name of Al-Azim and with uh, Al-Ali, Al-Muta'ali and Al-Ala uh, that nothing is too great for Allah. 
that Allah, the Most High, the greatest uh, of all, should be our source of strength. Uh, whenever we see obstacles that come in our life that are insurmountable, uh, whether we see problems that are unsolvable, or when people tell us that something is too great for us to achieve, that hey, you know, that's uh, you, you, you should probably try something else. You're not, you're probably not cut out for this, or that's too hard for you. Why don't you try something else? Uh, and getting deferred, um, you know, from other things that we should try to do and being uh, discouraged that we should recognize that nothing is too great to uh, achieve when we remember that our reliance is solely on Allah, who is greater, greatest, and the source of greatness, the source of strength, um, that we remember that this reliance is in Allah and not in any worldly thing, uh, but when we place that trust in Allah and we rely on Allah, that Allah is greater than this, uh, Allah can help us in overcoming those things which we perceive as greater, uh, those things we perceive as being insurmountable in a sense. And Allah makes things great. And so as such, not only does Allah ease that path and uh, make things that are insurmountable feel uh, like they are tangible and they're accessible and acquirable, but Allah also makes us great. Allah has this element of uh, in any of the attributes that when Allah is the most merciful, the most compassionate, most just, uh, as a result, Allah is able to spill these qualities over into creation to help them see what justice is, what greatness is, what uh, mercy is, and to be able to reciprocate these to the world around and not just be confined to one space. And so Allah's greatness lies in making great that anything is in our lives or even in us or how uh, that Allah can increase anything in benefit for you as well as for others. You may have a very simple job or a simple salary or a simple home. Uh, Allah can make these an infinite source of blessing for you. It may make uh, the most simplest things in your life, the most basic things in your life, a means of greatness uh, and a means of uh, a greatness that is relative. It's not something that is ascribed to the popular connotation of greatness, but a means of closeness to Allah, a means of high uh, connection and of a, 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 a true greatness that uh, emanates one's what well, one's spiritual sense and not just one's worldly accomplishments. Um, so what we need to do is we need to recalibrate our standards for greatness. Uh, we're oftentimes blinded by worldly things and successes. We mark, we mark greatness by certain worldly contributions or marks of wealth or uh, different accomplishments, how many awards or how many Grammys or Academy Awards or things like that that people can achieve. We have markers for greatness and only people can be called great if they've achieved certain things or done certain things that we uh, hold the standard for. And what we need to lift up is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi which, uh, uh, which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that verily, Allah does not look at your appearance or your wealth, that rather your hearts and your actions is what Allah looks at in Sahih Muslim, that we oftentimes attribute greatness to people just because they look a certain way, their figures are certain ways. Um, they seem to be like, beyond the realm of just the normal. They're, they're perfect in, in their physical features and uh, how they come across. They're just, they're just the standard of excellence and we attribute that they must be great. We add all these things to them knowing that they are flawed human beings. And we oftentimes have seen that, especially in recent years, uh, when the people who we attribute as greatest uh, or great amongst us oftentimes come out to be some of the worst people and have some of the most deep flaws uh, that, that are there. And so the standard of greatness should be higher than what the world sets, than what we are attributed to setting. That when we think about the standard of greatness, it's not just tied to an individual or accomplishment or anything like that. Uh, it has a deeper spiritual uh, in, inner connection that it's, it's founded in and not just by that which is outside because the law does not just look at what's on the outside or what we pile up in our savings account or in our wallets, but Allah looks at our hearts, what our intentions are, what our actions are, what our, uh, what our level of genuineness is and our authenticity is. Uh, the names of Ali and Al-Thim, the most high and greatest remind us to not be duped or not be taken for and not take for granted, um, you know, the, the greatness that Allah has, not to be duped by the world's standards for greatness. Um, and that we need to shift our attention and not forget that the real standards for greatness are those which are set by Allah. Uh, and the real uh, marker of greatness, the real judge of greatness is Allah. Um, and when we become uh, overtaken by the worldly standards of greatness uh, in opposition to Allah's standards, we, we want to remember who truly is the one who is great. 
who truly is the one that is most high and derive the standards from Allah. Um, we and, and, and the standards start by becoming God conscious, first and foremost, by becoming God conscious as the door of opening this greatness and recognize that when we derive Allah's standards for greatness and not the worldly standards for greatness, we see that we're able to become more holistic and wholesome. If we just take the world's sense for greatness, all we have to do is maybe become accomplished in certain things. We don't have to change our character in any way. We just need to do the most output, uh, make the best music, uh, make the most money, do all this stuff, have the loudest voice in the room, and maybe we can become the greatest in the eyes of people or become the most successful at what we do. But our personalities may be the same. Our character may not be changed. And so Allah's greatness is one that calls holistic change. It's one that calls you to not just uh, stack up your stat sheet, but to change yourself in a way that makes you better for not just yourself, but for all those around you. And as one who will be in front of Allah, um, at the time of judgment. So becoming great by first becoming God conscious. So when we think of these names, first and foremost, remember that in uh, our salah, in our daily prayer, in the sujood, in the prostration, and in the ruku, the bowing, uh, there is the, uh, the, the beautiful names, uh, the beautiful um, honorifics and praises that we submit to Allah, that when we bow in our ruku, we say, Subhana Rabbi al azim uh, that glory to my Lord, uh, the, the the great, you know, this acknowledging the greatness of Allah. And then when we are prostrated, that subhanahu rabbi al-a'la, uh, that you also lift up Allah as the most high of, of, of praising Allah, the most high, that exalted is Allah, uh, the most high, recognizing that when you are in prayer, you are lifting up these attributes specifically uh, in a position of humility. We do, we bow um, to world leaders when we see uh, them come by, we prostrate in certain circumstances, but recognizing these are only for Allah. Um, and the Prophet lifts up how a uh, community will have right faces on the day of judgment from their prostrations. So seeing these as a means of greatness, that's what greatness is. Greatness is not just having it all in this world or being put on the cover of a magazine or being given a trophy here. Um, those are nice accomplishments, but that's not greatness at, as Allah knows it. Greatness is that when you show up, uh, at when it counts with the best uh, appearance as the Prophet has lifted up. Uh, so we not only take time in our prayer to connect with Allah, but we want to remind ourselves who Allah is at the end of the day, that when we say Allah Akbar, Allah is greater than whatever it is that uh, may be preoccupying us. So we want to be sure to check ourselves. We want to be humble before Allah um, in order to be raised by Allah. Uh, we want to reorient our standards of greatness and understand the greatness we see in this life is an illusion. It's not indicative of the greatness that Allah holds up. Uh, we want to be reminded through our prayers of Allah's greatness and remind ourselves of Allah's greatness. And we want to keep with us two things that the Prophet has lifted up uh, that can help us achieve this greatness and become more cognizant. Because remember, greatness in Islam, in our uh, practice, begins with just being mindful of Allah. Uh, and two statements the Prophet said, two statements that are light on the tongue and are heavy on the scales uh, and are beloved by Allah, the most merciful are, exalted is Allah, praise be to him, and exalted is my Lord, the most great, that subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhana rabbi al azim that these two, uh, these two statements should be often repeated for us and, and see the, the bounties that they have for us uh, in achieving greatness, very light on the tongue, but heavy on the scales. And our greatness, inshallah, is that which is measured not by the heaviness of our bank accounts or our wallets or um, our endowments or the things that uh, this world defines as great. Our, our greatness is defined by our scales at the end of uh, our time and in the day of judgment, which are filled with deeds not bought by monetary value, but they are filled with deeds bought by uh, our genuine approach to our faith, our intentionality, and our care for each other, and our devotion to our faith and to Allah and to all those around us. We ask Allah, who is Al-Ali, Al-A'la, Al-Muta'ali, and Al-Azim, to make easy the path for us, to allow us to be uh, to be exalted in this world, to be allowed us to be exalted in the world to come, and to allow us to uh, embark on the path of greatness uh, and not on the path of illusion and to make this path easy for us and to be with us throughout this path. Inshallah, until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.